Welcome to Six Strings and Things, a guitar adventure. The place for all things guitar and gear. Here are your hosts, Chris, Jesse, and Robert. Welcome to Six Strings and Things, a guitar adventure. I'm Chris, and with me tonight is Jesse. Hello. Hey, Jesse. So, um, it's been a normal time between shows. Woohoo! I know. It's kind of amazing, isn't it? It is awesome. Now let's see how much we got done in that two weeks. <laughs> oh, yes. So there's where we have to fess up and say what That's we've right. been working on. Uh, so what have you been working on this week, Jesse? A precious little with guitar. Yeah. <laughs> you know, spring has sprung again. Actually, that was our last show, but it continues to spring. So, you know, we get so distracted. I yell at the kids because they, I don't really, but like my students, like, they're distracted because you have your phone and your games and everything the kids have. We have sunshine. Yeah. <laughs> There's biking and running and playing in the, I don't know, flowers? I don't know. Yeah. Anyway, so what I did do on guitar, <laughs> it's been a retro kind of week. Um, so playing along with uh, old Boston tunes and Queen. I really like the melodic lead thing, you know? Technique is awesome, you know? We get into Hendrix. And, well, actually, the guys for those bands, Brian May and Tom Schultz, were not bad technicians either. But it's mostly about the melodicism. They so rocked. What have you been doing? Well, uh, actually quite a bit. Because uh, I was thinking about before we were per, uh, you know, getting ready to do the show. I mean, what you do outshine. I do every weeks? week you outshine me. <laughs> I know. <laughs> oh, it's because you have more of a life than I do. So... <laughs> I have nothing to do but sit here that's and so, play guitar. That's so bad. That's not true, listeners. Guitar is the best thing you can do in your life. <laughs> that, that is true, yes. Otherwise, we wouldn't be doing this uh, podcast. So, um, yeah. So, let's see. The first thing I did was I went ahead and dedicated one of my guitars to E-flat tuning. Sweet. So, that's pretty cool. Um, basically, my Pacifica, which you can probably see against the wall... It's always weird to do it backwards. Back yes. all the way over there. Uh, I just tuned it down. I raised the action because I found that when I tuned it down, the strings were a little bit more floppy. Yeah. I didn't change the strings. I probably should have. Yeah, a little thicker ones. Yeah, but the 10s seem to be working really just fine. And in fact, I think if I'd gone to 11s, I would have even more problems with what I'm doing now. Which is? So, finger picking. Oh, sweet. Yes. So the reason why I dedicated one of my um, guitars finally to E-flat was um, I've decided to work on this song by um, an artist named Joanne Shaw Taylor. Um, She's an amazing blues artist, and she has a song called Going Home, which is um, in Mm E-flat. As you pointed out, actually, I'd ask you about uh, the tuning. Oh, yeah. Yeah, and, and she is clearly finger picking on the video that at least i was watching her play and uh so yeah i'm getting into the world of finger picking and if i put 11s on that thing it'd be even harder on my fingers than the 10s are now because after four years of playing guitar uh because after at the end of april that'll be my fourth year and um i have never finger picked so the right hand needs some work well, in the first place, the four-year anniversary deserves a, I don't know, a bullfrog or something. Yeah. Right. <laughs> or, or a new guitar. Or a new guitar. That's right. <laughs> what are we looking at? Blackies. Right. Oh, uh, no. Actually, oh, we'll, we'll talk about we'll that. talk about that. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah but still, awesome. Um, yeah, finger-picking. You know, though... Um, there are plenty of uh, country and, and uh, bluegrass guys who finger pick on like 12s. <laughs> yeah, I know. But you got to start somewhere, right? It's I mean, absolutely I should, true. I should probably put nines on that thing if I'm going to be doing this. And I'm a wimp. I think, I don't know if I have 12s on my acoustic. I think it might be 12s. But I'm, my calluses are crap. <laughs> I try to play acoustic. It's like, ow, you have to, like, half an hour. It's terrible. <laughs> but, you know, my long running joke, I don't really know how to play guitar. If I did, I'd know how to play acoustic, you know? <laughs> But yeah, no, no, you are good. It's just it's it's a totally different animal. That's all. Oh yeah, it is. And basically, she's playing predominantly on three strings. Mm-hmm. Um, the well, in a standard tuning, it would be the A, D, and G string. Mm-hmm. 
Uh, and so basically, I keep my thumb on the A string, my index finger on the D, and my th um, third finger on the G. And sort of just have my fingers angled so that as I pick, they don't interfere with each other. And try to get the coordination down. Fortunately, what's being done with the left hand isn't too terribly difficult. Yeah. So I can really focus on getting the rhythm with the right hand and the picking the strings. And right. uh, I don't think I'll become a finger picker, but I'm having a lot of fun doing this because largely I think because it's new. Yeah, it's true. And the other thing is, um, yeah, I'm sorry. I had a train of thought when I ran off the tracks. Um, you, the way you're doing it is pretty classically, I don't want to say classical as in classical guitar, but I mean, it's kind of the way to get into finger picking. I mean, each of the three um, fingers, you know, own a string. Mm -hmm. You know, she's only using three strings, you say, which that's fine. Um, a lot of times, like the three fingers will own like one, two, and three, or two, three, and four. And that's kind of the set that they sort of stay on. And then okay. the thumb will usually alternate between six and five, depending on the position, five and four. I mean, it just does the bass, so it's a little independent. Yeah. That, that makes sense. And there's there's some kind of standard finger picking patterns. Like I don't I'm not really a finger picker either, but I can fake it if you haven't listened to me play for more than like an hour. <laughs> <laughs> Because there's like some kind of standard finger picking um, uh, sequences that you can do, um, you know, like you know, thumb, like thumb, and classical guys name it like P I M, you know, or P I M A is what they do. But I mean, if you just figure one, okay. two, three fingers and yeah. then thumb, you could do like thumb one, two, three, two, one, one, three, two, three. There's all kinds of like permutations that you just do, and then you sort of mindlessly let it go until your muscle memory falls in okay and then the next thing is like just some standard not quite that simple but like um like dust in the wind by kansas uses a pretty standard little off of uh, this thing called travis picking which starts with like a pinch and then it has a standard pattern and once you know like that pattern you can play so many songs that use some variant of travis picking like like Marry Me by Train. I mean, it's a totally different song than Dust in the Wind, but it's basically the same picking back. Huh. So, um, yeah, it's it's neat to get into. And, and it's like this mountain of, you know, when you first get started. But actually, after that first bit, it, it gets a lot easier, a lot quicker. I could see that. You know, once you get over the hump, the learning curve. Yeah. I, I could, you know, it, it was funny because when my instructor was showing me uh, how to do this, he just starts picking up and playing it. He's like, mm -hmm. oh, I'm a little rusty. I'm like, oh, I couldn't tell. I'm like, mm -hmm. holy crap, this guy's good at everything. I mean, you know, just to, <laughs> to be able to just pick up and start finger picking like that really impressed me because I'm sure he spent most of the day not finger picking with his yeah. students, you know? Right. I'm sure. Um, so it's a cool song. I don't think I'm going to go through and learn the whole song. I think what I'm going to do is um, just learn the few first few parts just to get the finger picking down. The pattern. Yeah, and I don't, I think honestly there aren't too many different parts anyway to the song, right? And then you know just sort of walk my way through some kind of solo, and then pretty much be done with it. Uh, go to another pattern. <laughs> yeah, good, right? Exactly. You know, banjo is like that too. My uncle um, has been wanting to play banjo, mm -hmm. and um, he told me that it was all about the right hand. Yeah, and yeah, banjo it is. Yeah, yeah, and it's it sounds so impressive. And so, you know, fast and everything, but it really is just the right hand. And it's a pattern that once the hand knows it, he just keeps going, you know. Yeah. Well, what impresses me is that Joanne Shaw Taylor can sing while doing this finger picking stuff. Because, I mean, while it's not nothing too complicated with the left hand, it's still a lot going on with both hands. Yeah. And, you know, and to be able to have that such you know, program in the muscle memory so that you can then sing along with it. That just blows my mind. It's true. I'm not there yet. Yeah, nowhere close. Well, it's it's one step beyond, you know, where, you know, I have to hit the right strings at the right time, blah, 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 with the right hand with a pick, mm -hmm. and also have my left hand going on. I mean, there, actually, there are people who can figure pick pretty well, but like, you know, scales and, are, and improvisation and everything is like kind of foreign to them. So it's just whatever the skill set is. Oh, yeah. Yeah, but sure. Having said that, finger picking is a really cool skill set to have. Yeah. Yeah. Like I said, I have a good time. Um, slowly working on the calluses on my right hand now because, you know, 
<laughs> gotta, gotta break that in and i find myself you know after about 20 minutes I'm like this hurts <laughs> yeah it yes does. so now summer's coming so now's the time when you see this is the perfect opportunity to get back in acoustic guitar and really hammer the calluses yeah out sit on, on the porch and play yeah or out by a fire with a you know whatever you got Check yeah <laughs> Check, yeah <laughs> Oh, yeah, there's that uh, tea and honey whiskey thing that I've gotten into. Oh, yes. Yes. This would be another show. This would be another uh, Chris and Jesse's Alcohol Weekly or something. (laughs) So, Beer um, and Yukon Jack, what do you got? (laughs) Yeah, so so, uh, uh, something else that I am working on um, this past week and has been compiling a new list of songs that I want to learn. Because uh, I've done so much with technique and 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 all of that, I want to get back to playing songs again. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I've done a lot with rhythm and stuff, and that's all good. I mean, you got to do all that stuff, but I really want to get back to playing songs so I can see how this stuff's applied and trying to maybe. I think by playing songs, I will it'll help me identify where my weaknesses are. Right. And okay. yeah, might even identify strengths too. Because I can see, you know, parts I pick up real fast. Okay, clearly I'm okay with that material. Uh, parts I struggle with. Okay, there's a hole there that I might not have noticed going through all this technique stuff that I've been doing for the last few weeks. That's true. Because technique work is kind of like, you know, it's like when you learn a song and you're working on like a bit, you know, one thing. But it's when you learn a song and you try to play it, you know, you got to be smooth kind of across the board. Yeah. Yeah, that's good. And then uh, <clears> the <throat> final thing I've done in the last two weeks uh, is I hit up the Guitar Center in Harrisburg. Oh, so, yes. Yeah, so I went down to visit the family for Easter, and, of course, they're south of Harrisburg. But uh passed through Harrisburg, and I asked my wife, I said, hey, you want to go shopping because we're in Harrisburg? She's like, yes. Yeah. So I was like, can we please go to Guitar Center? <laughs> She's like, sure. <laughs> so, so, so we went to Guitar Center first, and then we went and did clothes shopping with her. And, um, you know, she spent a lot more than I did because I spent nothing, uh, which was amazing. I walked out of the store with nothing. <laughs> That's a switch. <laughs> but, yeah, I know. It's just like a new thing, right? It's, it's like some kind of maybe personal growth moment. I don't know. <laughs> but um, anyhow, I found that Black Strat that was there, that was used. It's 2012 uh, Black Strat. And I played it. And, uh, you know, it just didn't speak to me disappointment it was okay now this is not just a black strat we, we got to make this clear this is a blackie so this is a black strat white pick guard with uh maple fretboard yep all the things are like mm-hmm. yeah wasn't the eric clapton like fender model they have one of those yeah but what, right. is, what is the difference other than maybe a different back of the neck sort of thing i think it's like back of the neck and i think the pickups are different yeah um but I think that's about it. I mean, you know, Fender will talk about like these no load or special no load circuits or whatever. Yeah. Um, but I think there is something different with the pots. I think they are different pots, actually. Still, when Clapton did slow hand in the 70s, he wasn't using a special strat. No, he was probably using an American standard. Yeah. And so um, anyhow, I played it. I liked it. It was a fine guitar, and I would not mind having the guitar in my collection. But it was a thousand bucks, and I didn't think it was a thousand dollar guitar for my collection. Mm-hmm. Um, so, as I was walking through the used section, picking up stuff and grabbing stuff, I came across this uh, 2014 60th anniversary Stratocaster, right? Mm-hmm sunburst finish it had gold hardware which is the one thing i didn't like about it yeah and that was the only thing i didn't like about it i plugged that guitar in and oh boy did that sound awesome um nice warm pickups i think they're the, the fender 54 pickups they basically made in 20 uh for sale for 2014 okay i think you, i think you could still get them though the pickups but the guitar was only for sale in 2014 it had a th- a 2013 serial number mm-hmm. uh, in it. Yeah, it was my dog. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> for those of you that are watching on, vi- on uh, video, that was the dog. For those of you listening on audio, you didn't see my dog just walk by. <laughs> so, um, so anyway, uh, it, it had this compound radius fretboard, which Sweet. I immediately fell in love with. Yes. This 
oh, this thing played like a dream. I should have walked out with it. Did you mention the price of that one? No, not yet. It was. <laughs> <laughs> Is there a reason it's, for that? <laughs> yeah, it's the reason why I didn't walk out with it. I think it was uh, twelve fifty. Which uh, for a guitar that speaks to you, you know. I put my, for, Justin, my Justin hat on. Yeah, there you go. For the one, yeah, the one in your collection that's like the the piece. The one you go to. Yeah, I, I could see that being it. it yeah. And I actually played it through uh, a Mustang one. Oh, wow. I wanted to, yeah, I wanted to play it through something that I had mm. at home, something similar. And uh, they had a Mustang three there that I probably should have really played. Well, actually, if I would have played it through the Mustang three, I would have bought it. <laughs> <laughs> it's, so it's better than I, I went through the one. It sounded great through the one. Uh, it. It sounded way better to me than the standard Strat. Now that's a personal thing. So remind me what the standard Strat has in it. Custom fat, custom fat fifties. So the fifty fours, I'm assuming, are like the standard. You know, trying to be sort of a remake of the fifty. Yeah. Pickup, which would have been a fairly not underwound, but not really a fat or high wind pickup. No, it was a much warmer sound. That's an interesting thing because at least to me it was. Yeah. Um, we, well, you know, there's so many pieces to a guitar. It's hard, you know, between the wood and the neck and everything else, it's kind of hard to say what makes it sound the way. And, and like another one of that model, what would it sound like? Who knows? That might have been the best one of those. I don't don't tell the, me that on the planet. Yeah, don't let tell it me get that. away. <laughs> Yeah, don't tell me that. That's terrible. If I didn't have so many things to do work related this week, I'd drive down there and buy it. Actually, no, I wouldn't. I can't. But oh boy, that thing was was Sweet. an awesome playing guitar. Uh, I'm gonna keep my eye out on eBay because they they only made those for 2014. Mm-hmm. So that's not that huge of a deal because there's a used market now. I mean, right. you know, 20 years ago that would have been a much more difficult guitar to get your hands on. Right. You know, especially around here where, where we live, um, just the used market's just not there uh, for that kind of guitar. I do wonder what that does. I mean, because they come up with new things all the time that are, you know, limited release or whatever. And obviously that doesn't, it kind of speaks to a little bit of a collectorism thing, but obviously at that price, it wasn't out of hand, you know? I, I think when they were new, they were 14 or 15. Okay. And I thought 12 was kind of high because I don't think it came with a case. Yeah. And so that to me just seems like, wow, you know, it's a case would put it to the brand new price. Yeah. And a new one came with a case. And so that's that's an argument to make. And, of course, they would argue back, well, this is a collector's item. Yeah, but that's that's crap because if something's made to be collectible, it's not collectible. Exactly true. Right. Yes. Um. So, honestly... The gold hardware was kind of a turnoff. And now I know this sounds insane, but my philosophy is if I'm going to drop $1,200 on a guitar, I want to like everything about it. That's true. And so if there's one thing I don't like, then, you know, it's kind of a reasonable. I know, you know, you should be like just the sound. That's all that matters. But well, I think when you're in that category of price, um, I think you could be a little bit more picky. Um, yeah. Yeah. You know? I mean, it's up it, to you to be whatever. I don't like gold just because usually it doesn't wear as long as chrome. Right. You get, you know, it wears through and you get that kind of grayish nickel underneath it or whatever it is. Right. Well, you know, and I thought to myself, I was like, you know, I could get a Mexican Strat, slap in 54 pickups. The problem is, is that neck. I loved that neck. And by the time I got another neck for it, that was a compound radius or whatever. I, you're, you'd be putting it up there, yeah. Yeah, yeah. You know, I don't know that I've ever played a compound radius neck that I didn't like. And there's been various thicknesses and everything, but um, Warmoth makes them. I've had um, versions of Yamaha's, Pacificas had Warmoth necks. They are beautiful. Jackson, their higher line are all compound radius. I've had Carvin necks. I think the Highline Parker is like that. And they're just, they're awesome. For people who don't know what a compound radius neck, basically oh, yeah. the radius of the the frets low near the nut is lower, is more round than the radius is toward the bridge. 
So you might start out with, and, and it varies, you know, whatever. It might start out with like a 10 inch radius, which would be easier for cording, um, you know, making bar cords or whatever near the nut. But then as you go up the neck, it flattens out. Maybe you get a 16 inch radius up there where you did, tend to bend. And so it makes it just kind of perfect for everything. Um, but it's harder to make, and that's why they end oh, up uh, yeah. being on higher line guitars. Yeah, I think the strat that I was looking at was uh, nine and a half mm -hmm. towards the nut and 14 right. higher up on the neck. Um, you know, so when they went and built this 54 sort of 60th anniversary kind of thing, mm -hmm. they didn't, I think they, in my opinion, they did the right thing. They didn't reproduce the 54. Right. Right. Um, they made a 54 with modern tweaks. Yeah. You know, and I think that's pretty cool. And now some people would be like, oh, well, that's like sacrilege and blah, blah, blah. Right. I should have made us an exact copy. I, I don't know. Maybe maybe they did for some folks that, you know, wanted that. Mm -hmm. But I liked the, the, the idea of the nod to the past. But, hey, let's use what we've learned since 54 in making guitars. Oh, I and agree. Make, yeah, and make this a nice quality instrument. Yep. I um, definitely agree because we've, we've progressed just in manufacturing. Yep. You know, it's like if you were going to make some kind of, you know, 54 or 57 throwback Chevrolet or something like that, you wouldn't really make it like that because it right. would not be a safe vehicle. <laughs> right. Right. Well, yeah, and, and quite frankly, um, I, I, I just can't be in a position to be a snob about the the 54 because I'll never own one. Yeah. Right. I'll never be able to say, Oh, well, they're the greatest guitars in the world. Like the best strat ever made. But I can't ever say that because I will never play one. I will never own one. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. If I were given the opportunity to play one, I would be too terrified to actually play it. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> so, yeah, so, uh, you know, I, that's been my two weeks of guitardom, if you will. That's a pretty good two weeks. Yeah, yeah, it I was. feel good because you've balanced the universal karma with my absolute guitar slacking, so yeah. that's good. you have to make up for it next time. There you go. <laughs> I'll do that. Yeah. <laughs> we'll see. I've said that every time. It never happens. <laughs> No, nah, it's good. It's like uh, all things in life, you know, it, things have their own time. So. Balance. Yep. Absolutely. Yes, winter is supposed to be guitar time when you just you, you hole up, you know, in your house and you have hot chocolates and, and play guitar all the time. Yeah. And see, for me, for my job, it's just the opposite because my right. summer opens up. The schedule opens up a lot. And so I feel bad sitting inside playing guitar uh, on nice summer days. But if I don't, I'm not going to get better. Right. Yeah. And that's why you got the sun porch out there. It's, you know, yeah, nice place. yeah. Find a nice sunny room playing out. <laughs> Open the windows up. It's like being outside. Yeah, close enough. <laughs> yeah. So. All, right. All right. Well, uh, we didn't really have a topic other than just chatting today. So I guess we will go ahead and wrap this show up if you're okay with that, Jesse. I'm good with that. You good with that? All right, well, folks, uh, please subscribe to us on YouTube and iTunes and follow us at SST Show on Twitter. Uh, let us know what you think of the show. Be polite, be kind, remember, we have feelings. And, uh, you know, feel free to post a comment if you want us to talk about something in particular or if you want to ask us a question. Uh, just either post on the uh, Twitter or on the YouTube feed, and we will do our best to respond. So... For those of you uh, out there in guitar land, just remember, keep on picking and grinning. Six Strings and Things, a guitar adventure is a production of Jester Cat Studios. You can see more about this and all other Jester Cat shows at JesterCat.com. You can also email the show at SST at JesterCat.com or continue the conversation on Twitter at SST Show. You can follow Robert at RS Macy, Jesse at Jester 700, and Chris at CW Culp. Thanks to Jesse for playing and recording our intro music. 